Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage in San Francisco for VMware Explore 2022, formerly VMworld. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, 12 years we've been covering this event, formerly we, VMworld. First now, time in West. Now it's <laughs> Explore. We've been in North, we've been in South, we've been in Vegas. <laughs> Multi-cloud is now the exploration, <laughs> VMware community's coming in. John Siegel, SVP at Dell, CUBE alumni, Dave McCraw, VP at VMware. Guys, thanks for coming back, both CUBE alumni. It's great to see you. Very senior organizations, senior roles in the organizations of VMware and Dell. One year since the split, great partnership continuing. I mean, some of the conversations we've been having over the past few years is that control plane, the management layer, making yeah. everything work together. It's essentially been the multi-cloud, hybrid cloud story. What's the update, What's, how's the partnership look? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, just to start off, I mean, I would say, I don't think our partnership's been any, has ever been any better. Um, if you look at, you, you mentioned our vision, very much a shared vision in terms of the multi-cloud world, and I don't think we've ever had more joint innovation projects at one time. I think we have over 40 now, Dave, that are going on across right. multi-cloud, AI, cybersecurity, uh, modern applications. And, and uh, you know, here, just at, at, you just, at VMware, VMware Explore, uh, we have over 30 uh, VMware sessions that are uh, featuring Dell. Um, and this is, I think, more than we've ever had. So, look, I think um, there's a lot of momentum there and we're really looking forward to what's to come. So you guys sp obviously spent a lot of time together when VMware was part of Dell and then you've been, it's, it's been a year since the spin and then you codified, I think it was a five-year agreement. You know, so you had some time to figure that out and then <clears throat> put it into to paper. So you just kind of quantified some of the stuff that's going on, but now we're entering a yet another phase. So that, 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 that agreement's probably more important than ever now. I mean, at least in terms of getting it documented and an understanding, right? What are yeah, your that, that agreement really defines a framework yeah. for solution development and for go-to-market. So we, we've been doing it and refining it for the last five years. So now, you know, putting and codifying it into a written, signed agreement, it, it basically is instantiating what we've been doing that we know works. Uh, where we can drive uh, solution development, we can drive deep architectural co-innovation together as well. And as John said, across multiple you know, project and solution areas. So we, we've been talking to years uh, to, you know, a lot of these track guys, guys like Matt Baker, about right. things like, you know, you see AWS do Nitro, and then of course Project Monterey, and, and I know that you guys have had a, you know, a big sort of input into that, and so now to see it come to fruition, is, is huge because, you know, from our view, it's the future of computing architectures. How do you handle, you know, data-rich applications, AI applications? That's, what are your thoughts on that? I couldn't agree more. Uh, Project Monterey is a great example of how we're innovating together, we just talked about. I mean, first of all, it's all, so we have VxRail, which let, let's, let's start there, right? And we have over 19,000 joint customers right now. We continue to innovate more and more on the VxRail architecture. Great example of that is our partnership with Project Monterey and taking essentially vSphere 8 and running it for the first time on an HCI system directly on the DPUs itself, right, on the DPUs. Ability now to offload NSXT from, from the CPUs to the DPUs. Uh, you know, and the short term, first of all, great benefits for customers in terms of better performance, but as you just mentioned, it's game changing in terms of laying the foundation for the future architectures that we plan on together helping our customers. You know, it's one of the dynamic before you go on, is um, and it's not unique to Dell, but it, it, Dell's the biggest you know, suppl supplier, partner, et cetera. But you're able to take VMware software and drive it through your business, and, and that enables you to get more subscription revenue and makes it stickier, and that's a, a really important change from you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, and it, it's, it's a combination as, you know, of Dell software and VMware software together, absolutely. Right. And, and I think what's, what, this is a, a game-changing innovation that you can run on top of our joint system, VxRail, if you will. Um, and now what our customers can expect is lifecycle automation of now, you know, the DPUs, um, as well as Tanzu, as well as everything else we layer on top of that core foundation that we have over 19,000 customers running today. So, I mean, like that 19,000 number, I want to get back up to the VxRail, and you mentioned vSphere. That's big news here this year, v vSphere 8, big release, a lot of going, what's the HCI angle, you mentioned that. What's in it for the customer? What does that mean for the folks here? Because let's face it, the vSphere aids got everyone in the, all the vSphere guys are going, going crazy, right? Another vSphere release, getting training, they're up the labs here. What's it mean for the customers? What's the value there with that HCI solution with the DPUs? Well, first of all, vSphere 8, as we know, is, it has a lot, a lot of goodies in it. Um, but you know, what, what I think, that, 
to me, what's been most powerful about this is the ability to run vSphere 8 uh, and, and specifically on the DPUs. Now you can run, it, it is open up all new possibilities now. And so that NSXT that I mentioned, you know, running that on DPUs opens up a whole new uh, architecture now for our customers going forward and now really sets us up for modern distributed architecture for the future. So like Edge? Edge. Edge. Yeah, okay. Like Edge. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and, and vSphere 8 brings in you know, cloud connectivity as well. So you know, customers can run in a cloud disconnected mode, they can run in a cloud con connected mode. So you know, that's going to bring in the ability to do specialized things on security, uh, lifecycle management. There's a whole series of services that can now be added as well as you know, leveraging you know, vCenter management capabilities. So, from a so what's happening at the edge? We had I think it was Lowe's on at Dell Tech yeah. World, right? Okay, good. <laughs> Not the other one. <laughs> um, but so, so that's got to be exploding now oh. with that with that pack because it just changes the game for for these stores. There's, I mean, retail, uh, manufacturing. Maybe you can give us an update on. There's so much Telco. happening on the edge side, as you know. I mean, that's where most of the, a lot of the uh, innovations happening right now is mm -hmm. at the edge, and a lot of the companies we talk to, um, 8x, right? 8x expectation of, of increase in uh, uh, edge workloads over the next couple years. And the of years. data challenge too is huge. And the, and the data challenge is huge. So. You heard about the innovations with vSphere 8. In addition to that, we just introduced today as well uh, the smallest VX rail for the edge ever. Um, this thing is, it's like, think, picture a couple eight and a half by 11 notebooks. You, not much, not much, you know, maybe a little wider than that, but not much more. Um, you know, th these, these are stacked on top of each other. These are, you can rack and stack and mount these things anywhere. And it also is the first HCI system that has, you know, a built-in hardware witness. So, this helps set it up for environments that are you know, network bandwidth constrained uh, or have high, high latency. Well, those no next longer gen, an issue those anymore. Those next-gen apps are going to want to have a local data server right. at the edge right. and with compute there. Right. High performance. Right, um, right. So now right. you get it across the wire. Yeah, so you get rack a stack a couple of these small things. I mean, they can, they can fit in a, like a, you know, Clark Kent's briefcase, <laughs> right? These things are so small. Yeah, um, you want to do the analytics on site and return responses back. You don't want to be moving massive data payloads off the edge. So you got to have the right level of compute to run machine learning algorithms and, and do the analytics type work that you want to do to make local decisions. Yeah, I mean, rapidly. we just had David Liskam on who's one of the keynote speakers here at the event and we've been talking about super cloud and multi-cloud, meta cloud, all the different versions of what we see as this next gen. And this brings up a point of like, his advice to young kids, learn how multi-cloud, learn about system architecture, because if you can figure out how to put it together, you're going to have to make more money. Anyway, that, this whole edge piece opens up huge challenges and opportunities around how do you configure these next-gen apps? What does the AI look like? What's the data architecture? This is not like get some training curriculum online and get, get you know, 101 and you get a job. No, this is more complicated, but with the hardware, you guys make it easier. So where's the complexity shift between having a powerful edge device like the VX rail with the vSphere. What's the easy button on that? <laughs> like, like how do you guys, what's the vision? Because this is going to be a major battleground, this whole edge piece. Yeah. It's going to be sure. huge. Well, I think when you look at the innovation that Dell is bringing to market with technologies like Outlander and then designing that into VX rail, and then you combine that with our Tanzu capabilities to manage uh, development and deployment of applications. This is about uh, heterogeneous deployment and management at scale of applications with technologies like Tanzu Mission Control. Then deploying service mesh, right, for security. Being able to use SASE to be able to secure, you know, with cloud security over the wire. So it's bringing together multiple technologies to deliver simplicity to the customer, the ability to go one to many, you know, in terms of being able to deploy and manage and update, whether that's a security patch or an application update, and do that very rapidly at a low cost. So the benefit with this solution now, just putting this together, is I can ship a box, small, and or stack them, and essentially it's done remotely, it's, that's provision, the provisioning issues, not a truck roll, as they say, or professional services enabled. You can just drop that out there and this is where Connect. customers need to be. Yeah, that absolutely. Is that right. the vision? You, you I get yeah, that right? Exactly. Vision, yeah. You don't. You don't need the. You don't need the skills. Yeah. You don't need the, the specialized skills. You don't need a lot of space. You don't need you know high network bandwidth. 
Um, all these things, right? The, the, all these innovations that we're talking about here um, really combine into really uh, enabling a whole new, a new, whole new future here for Edge. Is, is Apex, are you doing Apex now? Is that, I think it's part, sure. of, part yes, of your bailiwick. Okay, yes. so um, is Apex fitting into the, to the Edge? How does it fit? Yeah, I mean, well, well first of all, you know, a lot of what we talk about, Apex is really about a consumption, a way to ensure there's a, a common cloud experience wherever the data is and where the applications are. Uh, and so absolutely, Edge fits into this as well. And so we have, we have common ways to consume our infrastructure today, our joint infrastructure, whether it's in the data center, at the Edge, um, or you know, uh, in, in the cloud. Usain Aragu, when he was on, I said, you know, it was a great keynote, loved it. One of the things that I didn't think there was enough of was security, and he's like, yeah, we only had so much time, but you know, VMware is a very strong security story. We heard a really strong security story at Dell Tech World. I mean, half the innovations in the new you know, storage products were yeah. security and the new OS's and it was yeah. impressive. What, what's, how are you guys working together on security? Is that one of those? Well, let me you know, give you a few projects? key things yeah, here. A couple well, you know, our teams are working together at the engineer to engineer level, you know, think, uh, reference architectures for zero trust as an example. Being able to look, you know, hardware root of trust up into the application layer, right? So we're looking at really defense in depth here. You know, I mentioned what we're doing with SASE, right, with cloud security capabilities. So you really have to look at this from the edge to the core, what the, you know, from a networking perspective, getting the network, the insights on things that may be, anomalies that may be happening on the network. So using our network insight technology, you know, uh, and NSX, and then being able to ultimately uh, have a secure development pipeline as well. I mean, you, we all know about the supply chain attacks that happen, yeah, right? right? And so, being able to have a you know, secure pipeline for development is critical for both of our companies working together. Yeah, I think the Tanzu, and you mentioned the developer self-service, that experience combined with kind of the power yeah. of the Dell, you know, let's face it, the boxes are awesome, hardware matters, and software matters, so bringing that expertise together, Michael Dell always used to say on theCUBE, better together, uh, in respect to VMware yes. and Dell, a lot of fruit has been born from that labor, right, specifically, around, and now when you add the Tanzu and you get vSphere, you got the operational excellence, you got the, you got the performance and scale with the Dell boxes and hardware and software, and now you got the Tanzu. What's missing, or is it all there now? I mean, where, where, well, how, would you, how would you guys peg the progress bar? Is it, yeah. is it like, it's all rocking right now, or? or I, I'd say you're never done, right. first okay. of all, but I, you know, I look at, some of the innovations that we've brought to market recently where we are combining and stacking these technologies into a more defense in depth like solution. You know, bringing NSX onto VX Rails right. so that you can flip a switch easily and With light up plugins. firewall. The new right? plugin, yeah, new that's plugin. a great example simple, of that. Simple, simple. Um, carbon black workload, another that's example cute. where we're taking carbon black technology that was typically on endpoints, you know, on PCs, mm -hmm. bringing that into the data center. Right, and leveraging all the analytics and insights around you know, being able to identify anomalies and then remediate those anomalies. So we're seeing very good traction with those and solutions. And the cloud native developers, containers, are all native containers, working with compute and container storage, object store in the cloud, um, Kubernetes. That's, we've embraced it, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, containers, okay. running containers and VMs on the same infrastructure, common way to manage it all. I mean, that, that's been a big part of it as well. You I guys would, done that earlier. Obviously, too. a lot of the focus that Dell's bringing here as well is, is an ability to run that stack yeah. easily. Right? You, you heard the announcement on uh, Tanzu for Kubernetes operators, right? Yeah. Earlier today, TKO yeah. we call it. Uh, you know, that running on VxRail now is really targeted at the IT operator and allowing them to easily stand up a self-service developer DevOps yeah. environment on VxRail going forward. Yeah. And, and then a, a, a piece that might be invisible to them is back to Monterey. Isolation, right. encryption, and, and data moving, you know, between the storage, the security, the compute, right, the management, right? That's that's a complete and it's about re reducing attack services as well, right? Yeah, yeah, the security right. perspective as well. If we, when you when you're moving NSXT onto a DPU, you're doing that as well. So there's, it takes the little things, right? At the end of the day, security is a mindset mm -hmm. um, up across both companies in terms of how we approach our architectures. Um, and it's the, you know, a lot of times it's the little things as well that we make sure, right? So shared vision, working at the engineering levels together for many, many years, know that. You guys are validating more of that coming. What's next? Take us through, okay, we're here, 2022. We got super cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid, full throttle right now. It's hybrid, it's a steady state. That's cloud operations. Infrastructure as code has happened, it's happening. What's next? 
for you guys in the relations? Can you share a little bit that you can, if you can, I, what's, I, what I we can expect? What you see uh, with Monterey is the start of a re-architecting right. of IT infrastructure. Not just in the data center, but also at the edge, right? These technologies will move out and be pervasive, you know, across, you know, I say, edge to colo to core data center to cloud, right? And so that's a starting point. Now we're looking at memory tiering, right? I think we talked last time about Capitola and memory yeah. tiering and yeah. you know, being able to bring that forward. Uh, being able to do more with confidential computing as an example, right? Secure enclaves and confidential computing. So you know, a lot of this is focused around simplicity and security going forward. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and ease of management around. Take the heavy lifting power. away from the customer, abstract that in, offer the power and performance. That's right, and, and it's going to come yeah. down to delivering time to value for our customers. Yeah. You know, can we cut that time to value by 25, 50% so they can be in production faster? Yeah, I think Project Monterey is something we're going to be building on for a long time, right? I mean, this oh, is yeah. the start of a major new future architecture of these companies. So if you had to pick one, we have 40 initiatives that are joined together, real, literally. Project Monterey is one of my favorites for sure um, in terms of what it's going to do, not just for that common cloud experience, but for the edge. And, and we talked a lot about the edge today and where that's headed. You think it's going to explode up new apps? I really do think so. Right. Well, it's going to put you on a new it's curve. It's going to put in a new curve, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. right. And operationally, uh, security-wise, um, from a modern apps perspective, I mean, all, it, it, it checks all the boxes and it's going to allow us to, to help and take our existing customers on that journey as well. Yeah. What's great about this conversation, one we've been following both of you guys for a long time and your companies and, and technology upgrades and, and the business impact and the open source and all, all doing all this for customers, but the wave that's coming, we're seeing the Expo Hall here, I mean, it's, it, people are really excited. They're enthused, they're committed, yeah. highly confident that this, this wave is coming. They kind of see it, people kind of seeing the fog lift, they're seeing money making, value creation, people kind of feeling more comfortable, but still a little nervous around you know, what's coming next because it's still uncertainty, but pretty good ecosystem, I'd have to say. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, a lot of them are excited about you know, what they can do at the edge and how they can differentiate their businesses. I mean, that's right. Well, congratulations, guys. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing the update. Thank really you, appreciate John it. Dave. More appreciate innovation is not stopping here at VMware Explorer. Dell and VMware continuing to have that kind of relationship, joint engineering. It's all coming together, and, and you can mix and match the, and the stack, but it's ultimately going to be cloud operations. Edge is the, the action, of course, hybrid cloud as well. It's theCUBE. Thanks for watching. <laughs>